What do you make of the fact you mentioned Rise and Fall of the Third Reich? I just have you uh, read that? Yeah, read it twice. And so, you read it twice. Yes. Okay, so no one even knows what it what it is. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm like, wait, I thought this was like a super popping book. <laughs> super pop. I, I'm I'm not like it's that. I'm, I'm not that far in it, but it is. It's so interesting. Yeah, uh, um, it's written by a person that was there, which is uh, very important to kind of. You know, you start being like, how could this possibly happen? And then when you read Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, it's like. People tried really hard for this to not happen. People tried. They almost reinstated a monarchy at one point to try to stop this from happening. Like, they almost, like, like the, abandoned democracy to try to get this to not happen. At least the way it makes me feel is that there's a bunch of small moments on which history can turn. Yes. It's like small meetings. Yes. Human yeah. interactions. And it that's both terrifying and inspiring because it's like, um, even just, Attempts at ass assassinating Hitler, like time and time again, failed, oh, and they was were it so like close. Operation Valkyrie, mm -hmm. such a good. Oh. <laughs> and, and then there is also also the role of that's a really heavy burden, which is that from a geopolitical perspective, the role of leaders to see evil before it truly becomes evil, to anticipate it, and to stand up to evil, because uh, evil is actually pretty rare in this world at a scale that Hitler was. We tend to, you know, in the modern discourse, kind of call people evil too quickly. But. If you look at ancient history, like there was a ton of Hitlers. I, I actually think it's more the norm than, like, again, going back to like my sort of intelligent design theory, I think one of the things we've been successfully doing in our slow move from survival of the fittest to intelligent design is we've kind of been eradicating like, if you look at, like, ancient Assyria and stuff, like, th that shit was, like, brutal. And just, like, the heads on the, like, like brutal, like, de like Genghis Khan, just, like, genocide after genocide after genocide. There's, like, throwing plague bodies over the walls and decimating whole cities or, like, like the Muslim conquests of, like, Damascus and shit. Just, like, people, cities used to get leveled all the fucking time. Okay, get into the Bronze Age collapse. <laughs> it's basically, there was, like, almost, like, Roman level, like, society like there was like all over the world like global trade like everything was awesome through a mix of i think a bit of climate change and then the development of iron because basically bronze could only come from this uh the way to make bronze like everything had to be funneled through this one iranian um mine and so it's like there was just this one supply chain and, and this is one of the things that makes me worried about supply chains and why i think we need to be so thoughtful about i think our biggest issue with society right now like the, the thing that is most likely to go wrong is probably supply chain collapse, you know, because war, climate change, whatever, like anything that causes supply chain collapse, our population is too big to handle that. And like the thing that seems to cause dark ages is mass supply chain collapse. But the, Bro the Bronze Age collapse happened um, like uh, it, it was sort of like this ancient collapse that happened where li like literally like um, – ancient Egypt, all these cities, everything just got like decimated, destroyed, abandoned cities, like hundreds of them. There was like a flourishing society. Like we were almost coming to modernity and everything got leveled and they had this mini dark ages, but it was just like, there's so li little writing or recording from that time that like, there isn't a lot of information about the bronze age collapse, but it was basically equivalent to like medieval, the medieval dark ages, but it just happened. I'm not going to, I don't know the years, but like thousands of years earlier. And then um, we sort of like recovered from the Bronze Age, age collapse. Empire reemerged, writing and trade and everything reemerged. Um, you know, and then we of course had the more contemporary Dark Ages. Um, and then over time, we've designed mechanism that lessen and lessen the capability for the destructive uh, there, there's so power much, centers to yeah. emerge. There, there, there's more recording about the the more contemporary dark ages. So I think we have like a better understanding of how to avoid it, but I still think we're at high high risk for it. I think that's one of the big the big risks, right? So now. the na natural state of being for humans is for there to be a lot of Hitlers. We just gotten really good at making it h hard for them to em emerge. We've gotten better at collaboration yes. and resisting the power, like authoritarians to come to power. We're trying to go country by country, like we're moving past this. We're kind of like slowly, incrementally, like moving, like moving towards like not scary old school war yeah. stuff. And I think seeing it happen in, in some of the countries that at least nominally are like supposed to have moved past that that's scary because it reminds us that it can happen yeah. like in 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 the places that have made 
like moved past, supposedly, as hopefully moved past that. And possibly at a civilization level, like you said, supply chain collapse might make people resource constrained, might make people desperate, angry, hateful, violent, and drag us right back in. I mean, supply chain collapse is how, like the ultimate thing that caused the Middle Ages was supply chain collapse. It's like people, because people were reliant on a certain level of technology, like people, like you look at like Britain, like they had glass, like people had um, aqueducts, people had like indoor heating and cooling and like running water and like buy food from all over the world and trade and markets. Like people don't didn't know how to hunt and forage and gather. And so we're in a similar situation. We are not educated enough to survive without technology. So if we have a supply chain collapse that like limits our um, access to technology, there will be like mass starvation and violence and and displacement and war. Like like, like you know, it's also it like yeah. In my opinion, it's like the primary marker of of dark, like what a dark age is. Well, technology is kind of enabling us to be more resilient uh, in terms of supply chain, in terms of to, to all the different yeah. catastrophic catastrophic events that happen to us. Although the pandemic has kind of challenged our preparedness for. Um, the catastrophic 